When I tell you that we're about to review a station wagon, you might think it's going to be a boring, unattractive, not very fun to drive car. Totally wrong. This car is one of many that proves that wagons are great for anyone who wants SUV practicality without the size, weight, and cost of a full-size SUV. This is the Volvo V90, which fits in between Volvo's S90 luxury sedan and XC90 SUV. It's got a great blend of style, luxury, and performance, but it's also got a ton of cargo carrying ability in the back. So let's dive in and take a look at what makes the V90 great. How does it look? It looks great, especially in this bursting blue metallic paint with the optional 20-inch R-Design wheels. Volvo's latest design language is taut and modern, and the sharp lines and creases on this wagon make it a car that will never fade into the background. How's the storage? Well, it's a station wagon, so yes, there's a ton of space in the cargo area. There's a nice wide opening and a low lift over height to make it easy to put stuff in. And with such a big space, I appreciate having this cargo divider so you can prevent stuff from rolling around too much. Fold down the back seats and there's even more space. In fact, Volvo says from the back of here to the back of the front seats, you can fit something that's six feet long. Now let's see how that looks when we put some suitcases in there. The center console compartment isn't enormous, but there's a big useful space ahead of the cup holders where I can easily rest my phone while driving. Is it roomy? With plenty of adjustment and a great view forward, the front seats offer lots of room for drivers and passengers of all shapes and sizes. Same in the back seat, where you'll find ample head and legroom that will keep kids or adults happy on long journeys. How does the interior feel? The inside of the Volvo V90, just like the S90 and XC90, is absolutely gorgeous. I love the mix of materials in here, from the stitched leather to the knurled accents on this start-stop button to the carbon fiber that's in this model. It's a great, great place to spend time and really stands up to the quality and design I've come to expect from the best European luxury cars. Is it well equipped? Yes, and in fact, it's hard to think of features that aren't available on the V90. This car, for instance, has heated seats and a heated steering wheel, a Wi-Fi hotspot, a crisp Bowers & Wilkins sound system, self-parking, a 360-degree camera system, adaptive cruise control, power tailgate, and LED lights all around. How's the infotainment system? Really easy to use. The 9-inch vertically-oriented touchscreen, called Sensors, works a lot like a tablet computer, allowing you to easily swipe between information panes. Information is presented clearly in straightforward menus. In addition to the built-in navigation, music, car information, and Bluetooth phone services, you'll also find support for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Is it a good daily driver? The V90 does pretty much everything right in terms of being a daily driver. All the controls have a really nice weight to them, whether it's the steering or the pedals. You can tell exactly what they're going to do. They're very accurate and precise, and there's a sort of sense of gravitas to the car. And as we drive around, it's very quiet, and the ride quality is really good, right up there with other premium cars in terms of keeping wind and road noise at bay and keeping me comfy over these pockmarked roads. I like that this engine, this 2.0-litre supercharged and turbocharged inline-four, is really smooth in its power delivery, and that I basically never notice when the 8-speed automatic changes gears. So, all things put together, it's a really, really nice car to use as a daily driver. Is it fun to drive? While it's not meant as a performance car, the V90 is actually really pretty fun to drive. This is the T6 model, so we've got the upgraded engine. With 316 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, Volvo says it'll get to 60 in under 6 seconds. And what I actually like most about the engine is just how much punch there is at all time. The turbo and the supercharger work together to make sure you never really have any dead spots or hesitation while you're waiting for the engine to wake up. Now, the steering isn't the most precise or full of feedback that you'll find in any car, but it's really, really quick to turn in, and I think that this car has really nice suspension control 
when you do go through curves. So as station wagons go, this is certainly a lot more fun to drive than you might expect. How's the fuel economy? This model with all-wheel drive and the upgraded T6 engine is rated 22 miles per gallon city and 31 mpg highway, although I've seen closer to 21 to 22 mpg in my use so far. The base front-wheel drive V90 T5 has ratings of 24 city and 32 mpg highway. How much is it? The Volvo V90 starts just below $50,000, and then the T6 all-wheel drive model starts at $56,000. This car, with all the options we've already talked about, comes in at just over 68000 a reasonable price given its size and luxurious appointments. What are the negatives? It's hard to think of any real negatives about the V90, except for perhaps one, and that's the fact that Volvo is going to make this car a special order only at US dealerships, meaning it'll be a little harder than normal to get your hands on one. Now, Volvo is going to stock the V90 cross-country at dealers. That's the slightly more rugged, lifted version of this. So that one will be easier to find. Who should buy it? Here at Motor One, we're strong fans of station wagons, and that really applies to the V90 as well. I understand that a lot of buyers in Volvo showrooms are gonna to gravitate to the XC90 because it's a traditional SUV, but the reason I like this is because it drives just like a car. It's smaller and lighter, and yet it gives you a lot of the practicality and all-wheel drive that you might get out of an SUV. The V90 is a really, really nice car in every respect that definitely pushes Volvo into the luxury category. If you were paying attention, you might have noticed I was wearing a new watch. This is the Strat 3, designed by famed Formula One technical illustrator Giorgio Piola. To find out more, visit GiorgioPiola.com.